Welcome to the end of the world, and to the question of today's episode, how do you feed people in it? Hi, hello, and welcome to Blades in the Dark, the all-rogues tabletop RPG where if you eat your glowing goldfish, you risk possession. So, as to that starting question, how do you feed people here? Well, namely in the city of Duskfall itself, but kind of goes for a lot of the different isles. Outside of the self being an equivalent to London during the Industrial Revolution of Growth and just stacks upon stacks of slums, you also have the issue of, I don't know, the cataclysm, the gates of death breaking open, ghosts, demons, and the entire Deathlands being the Deathlands, making it an issue to actually have farms spreading out. It's not that there's no farms entirely, it's just that they're very limited. You know, within the lightning towers. Because while some things exist and grow outside of the Deathlands, it's not much, nor is it always the best thing to begin with. So your classical things like certain small farm animals, general wheat products, those are kept under different daylights. Simulated light towers over a small section of the city down to the south. But even that doesn't really cover the majority of the city itself, and in fact is a bit more upper crust on who has access to it, so let's go, you know, bottom up. So if you're a common man, you're low down in the slums, or even just a factory worker from Scotland, you don't have access to the few different wheat crops and small animals that are actually being grown and produced after the cataclysm. The nobility and upper crust having a real high stakehold in those. Instead, you make do with what naturally grows kind of everywhere where things have died. Mushrooms. Mushroom farms, organized everywhere. To the point that outside of the main city's population, mushrooms and later eels are probably the main things that are actually eaten. Oh, rats as well. Rats also fit in that. But it's not just plucking mushrooms off of, you know, random dead things or bits of the back end of factories and ventilation systems. I mean, you can pick that. It's more that these farms are easy to hide, stow away, manage, and don't really require sunlight. Or at least not a lot. Most families, or even just small apartments, have certain rooms dedicated to just being a mushroom farm. Whether it's stored in different boxes, just an open fertility pit just on the bottom, just random dirt and detritus thrown in, or community-grown gardens. There's even a charity that looks over it, the Ministry of Dark Bloom. That charity actually places different mushroom gardens hidden throughout the city. Hidden's not the right word, more placed in specific parts. You might also bring up the concern of, you know, just randomly having rooms filled with this different bits of soil, detritus, and any kind of junk thrown in mushrooms growing that might attract other things. You know, bugs, rodents. That's actually seen as a positive. Not just because like, oh, it might clean some things up or clean each other out. It's the fact that, hey, Protein and variety! Well, those are the individuals and different kinds of families setting up in, you know, small abandoned rooms or closets in an apartment or random street corner or alleyway or, again, the ventilation system. Scrounging and farming wherever they can find space or have their own little space to themselves, you have sharecropping. A while back, these tunnels had been dug out and preserved specifically for mushroom gardens, either from old sewage systems, readapted into this, or dug out purposely. In fact, these were expanding quite far and almost being able to feed the entire city itself or having different opportunities for people to get food. However, depending on how you look at it, the city council eventually banned the number of these that can be made, citing that the construction of these various tunnels allowed different bits of scoundrels and criminals to hide, you know, cultists, unions, just criminals in general. It just also happened to have a benefit that the main houses and the city council at the time owned the majority, thus making the tunnels even more valuable. Man, corruption. It's there. Before leaving the low end of this, you have your usual bakeries and stuff, and what I mentioned in the last video, the mystery loaf, just throw whatever it is together. Don't question what's mixed in with that bread or meat pie, whatever it is. Best to not think about it, just pay for it, accept it. It's edible edible, maybe. Though alongside these routes are also just what's for the animal feed, because there are still animals. General animal feed being taken from, you know, canal weed, water moss, algae, anything that can just be dredged up from the sides of the canals. When it comes to this, no one in general is just allowed to pick it up. It's for a specific, uh, I think the Ministry of Prosperity? Nope. The Ministry of Preservation looks over the collection of this, so it can specifically feed those animals. You know, the horses that pull the wagons the blue coats are in, etc. But also, chickens, goats, just keeping a general population alive and storing it. This doesn't mean other people don't take it to mix it into things and make a weird weed out of it, but... Hey, you make ends meet. There's also a general alcohol that can be made from both, you know, the mix of the strange algaes from the canal and the liquid in there, and then fungus. Uh, fungus. Fungal brew. Noted as tasting god-awful, but still being able to do enough brain damage to do the job. Though outside of the general population of the city, we get a bit more into the well-off. Not middle class. Well-off. Though to the well-off, you actually have proper wheat. Proper flour. You have access to those different sun lamps. Well, not the lamps themselves, those are kept to the general gardens. But chicken, goat, horse, <laughs> and rice? Well, canal rice specifically. Certain canals have been dammed up to an extent to allow different rice farms, which are currently looked over by prisoners underneath the city because, hey, the occasional large, large canal eel swims in. 
Hence why prisoners are actually looking over this. In fact, touching on this note, a lot of the other main fields that supply the city itself are done through a mix of general labor, that's of people that live there, but then also prisoner labor. Whereas you might have these different clans and families that have been in the city from long before the Lightning Towers, looking over the general animals and small stocks. Then you have prison labor looking over some of the major fields, or again, these sunken rice gardens. It's also here from the last video that we have the good old Harrow Maze. For a brief rendition of it again, you have a small box that might be the size of a small closet or a large cabinet that is kept within your room, or house, depending on whether you have an apartment or an actual house. Inside it is a colony of tons of mice. And the way the machine works is you put feed in one end, you get mice meat out the other, as there's a section of it that you can just activate, kills everything in there. Then you can take it out, make your meat pies, your general meat and delicacies. Mmm, sounds amazing, doesn't it? Though of last of note with people that actually have a bit of money to an extent, fish, because you're a coastal city. Primarily river eel, but even then that's on the cheaper side. But you can get actual fish, goat, chicken, like previously mentioned, but proper meats to an extent. You have the harrow maze and some actually refined alcohol that's not just moonshined in someone's attic. Still not actual grapes, but cap wine. It's not that bad. But speaking of actual grapes, wine, having actual money, the wealthy. So when it comes to the wealthy in the city, it's, you know, the same access the well-to-do have off. Wheat, chicken, etc. But fine fish. In particular, it's seen as a classical and, you know, generally nice quality meal to have it displayed. So usually in a noble family's dinner, you'd have a fish kind of presented as it was in life on the main platter, and then everything else built around that that you pick from. Usually, you know, the exotic, the larger, the better. But in all those general big centerpiece meal item placed on a big platter somewhere, that is considered the general nice proper dinner for the wealthy within Duskfall. Like the pig with an apple, but you know, just a swordfish somewhere. However, where we get into the weirder, weirder end of things, Radiant. Radiant energy given from radiant animals and radiant plants. So the process itself is looked over with quite a bit of scrutiny, and we're a bit fearing a little from food, but I'll wrap back around into it. So the theory of radiant energy, or the general practice of it, is you take a creature, or a plant, something living, and reverse imbue the various bits of plasm in that kind of different life essence. Essentially trying to artificially make the equivalent of a leviathan. In fact, some actually say it might have been studied or learned from leviathans in the first place. Some in the streets touting that it's actually just demonic influence seeping into the city itself and the upper crust, but there's no regulation. In fact, there's so little regulation, there's no official way to produce these things. They're each made on a small individual basis for those that can afford it. Leaving different noble families and specific alchemists having their preferred methods or discussing it over a meal on how they exactly imbue these creatures. And the reason they'd imbue them, one, gives that weird glowing property, but two, it acts as vitalization for everything around it. Plants that would normally need sunlight, in fact, grow a lot faster and wilder when placed next to a plant that is giving off this or an animal that's giving off this energy. Allowing different nobles to have these different private greenhouses, gardens, ponds that have these radiant creatures or plants within it and grow exotic fruits, things that have barely survived the cataclysm, preserved and now kept within their private manners. It's even noted that one famous family actually has a vineyard with radiant trees and then actual grapevines just planted underneath it. Though there are some issues when it comes to radiant energy, first being what it can be imbued into. When it comes to mammals, it doesn't happen. It's just purely lethal to the creature. When it comes to birds, it can be really iffy on whether it works or not. And when it comes to plants and fish, that actually works. So kind of limits your options on what you can put it in. The other issue is you can't eat it itself. Like, yeah, it can help different plants and animals around it be vitalized to an extent and change a little, but if you ever end up trying to consume that, that radiant energy doesn't go away. It'd be kind of the equivalent of potentially having unrefined Leviathan blood of a lesser degree. I think the Leviathan blood just kills you. But this poisoning takes a strange turn of, you know, just being minorly ill to an extent but you attract ghosts. Whether you ticked one off or not, you just end up attracting some kind of spirit to you and some kind of possession or haunting. If you did tick off a specific spirit, you become a large, loud beacon from wherever you are that they come to. There are ways of treating it, with some whispers especially, but most of the time it's just warded off, hey, don't th eat these in the first place. And then when it comes to their disposal, they have to be burnt away like the general people. It's not because they make ghosts or anything or different spirits, it's just the fact that whatever they die, if it's not properly destroyed, it still attracts those spirits once they die, thinning the veil a bit. And to round it all off, when it comes to the food, whether it's the wealthy, the well-off, or the just scrounging and attempting to get by, half of everything's imported. The city can't feed itself. It has to have half, 
half of all of its food imported. Now that's a vulnerability, and if there was a story I wanted to tell, that might be an interesting thing to take. But with that small culinary adventure and the potential for different weird food types or different kind of recipes, and further radiant poisoning. <laughs> In any case, thank you for watching, thank you to my patrons, and I hope you're having a nice day, and if you aren't, I hope you do.